Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'm on LeeChess.org and I just got paired up playing a 3-2 game. Happy New Year to you all. January 1st, 2016. A 3-2 with a Sicilian. Alright, let's go for an open Sicilian. See what we get here. Okay, let's try for an English attack. Knight b3, f3. Not my uh, cup of tea, but uh, let's mix it up somehow. Huh? We're going to be going after one another's kings. a5. Okay. Let's play a4. Yeah, a4 and bishop to b5. Maybe. I'm not certain if I should play that right away. Maybe I could get on with g4, g5. Knight b4 and then a d5 break is lined up. Let's shoot for g4 right now, try to rattle the knight position. I don't have too much experience playing on the white end with this. Maybe I should immediately give him a kick. Yeah, let's do it. Alright. Now, king b1 is pretty common, I would think. Or maybe just still start pushing pieces, huh? Let's try h4. This will be quite natural. Rook c8 will be hitting soon. King b1. There's pressure on here. Okay, maybe now bishop b5 or no? Not really needed just yet, huh? That knight's going to arrive on c4 soon. Mm, I wonder about queen f2. Maybe I could have even uh, considered that on the last move. Although I'd be dropping g5. Queen f2? Hmm. Or keep pushing my pawns. Let's... Let's try this. I guess knight c4 is going to hit soon. Knight c4 I have to take. I can't allow them to take my dark square bishop. On d5, I think I could take on b6 and then take on e5. Hmm. Let's see. This is a super strong piece. Can't really work with the knight on that square. And this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to initially declare my light square bishop. I want to be able to take a piece out in just one move. Okay, that's a bit of a surprising move. Hmm. Okay. Um. Let's take like this. Let's get the G file. I guess rook takes, and then around this. Okay. Pressure on f3. How do I deal with that? Hmm. I wonder. Yeah, because queen f2, knight c4. Takes. I'm going right into a pin as well. Hmm. This is tricky. Um. Let's try queen f2. Not really a big fan of this move, but I have to go with something. Knight c4, I'm pretty sure I still have to take that knight. Just striking at this uh, heart of my structure on the king's side. Threatening bishop takes knight right now, so... Pretty limited. Let's take him out. And maybe knight to d2? Or, oh, you know what? I missed this resource. I had knight c5. and Maybe I still can be playing that? Hmm. Because there's this pin on the D file, I'm just noticing that now. Let's play King B1. Yeah, I think I had this much sooner. Or, you know what? No, only after I played Queen to F2 did I have this ID in mind. So it's something to still keep an eye on. It's Knight C5 idea for as long as the Black Queen's on the D file. Really not sure how to proceed here. I mean, this is quite common, I would think. Uh, actually, ooh, that's really getting sharp now, huh? Wow. Okay, so they're going to push their A-pawn right down my throat. Is that the big idea? I guess it is. Um, I could throw in bishop to b6, however. Then maybe queen f8. 
Mm. Let's go with this. I'm going to take and push A4. I guess so. And I have this move, and maybe now I should go for it. Knight C5, maybe into A6. Let's give it a shot. I should think about getting on this diagonal soon. It'll hit with the check. Hmm. Getting pretty scary. B3. Just take. Hmm. I could also hit the knight. With something. Hmm. I'm going to go with this. Try and keep the A file closed. It's tough. My queen is going to be restricted soon to defending c2. Not fun. Okay. Yeah, rook takes here is already an idea. Oh boy. Rook takes c3 and I think it's game over. Okay, I didn't even realize I had this knight move until right now. <laughs> I think rook takes here is still available. Yeah, I'm in big trouble after that, because then they could take the bishop next. Let's do this. Kick that knight out of there. Um, let's give him a kick. And then take on a2. Whew. Oof. Real sharp game. Got to get rid of that a-pawn now. Or let's make sure I get rid of the queens. Take with the pawn. All right, I have to defend b3. And my bishop, maybe bishop b6 was better. Yeah, let's play that. I got to start pushing these pawns. It's a big race. It's a big race. b4, their knight is a bit out of play right there. My b pawn does well to kind of kill him. That's, I probably could have done something better than that. They're going to start pushing their kingside pawns. Hmm. Let's get one rook off. I'm going to move my pawn anyway. Okay. Yeah, let's take. And I think I have to get this guy rolling. C4, C5. Yeah, just get pushing right away. And it'll hit with tempo this knight on b7. Okay, king here. Mm, I don't want to draw. Let's get pushing. Let's see who's faster. <laughs> I can't calculate this, of course. Uh, all right. Yeah. And... King here. Get inch up or no? Yeah, let's do this. I have this square covered. I thought there was a knight check. There isn't. I could keep advancing. These checks run out. Do they not? D6 and then C6. I think I could keep pushing. There might be an exchange sacrifice. Um... Let's keep going. Hmm. Okay. Could push with this guy, right? Okay, what am I missing? These pawns are very uh, dangerous. Start pre-moving. Take there. And get a queen. Um, oh, okay, that was not cool what just happened there. I got to get this. I don't even know what just happened there. And, yeah, that's no good. I have to try and hold this to a draw. I can't even make sense of what just happened there. Um. Okay, I think this is a draw now. Yeah. I can't even... I'm going to have to look back and see what in the world just happened there. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's just take here. 
and we're going to, I guess, play on for just a little bit more. I'll just offer a draw. Yeah, I guess they offered a draw right at the same time. Wow, what just happened there, right? They played Rook there, and I promoted. Hmm. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. I was in pre-move on this recapture. Then they did that push. I should immediately come down here. Oh, that was too much of a nail-biter. Rook here stops the pawn, and then I could push through. So, Rook to d1, and only then push. Wow, that really turned out to be a race. Normally, it's a race to kill one another's king, but then it turned out to be these two passers. Get them pushing as soon as possible. And I probably could have saved some time right around this point here. Like, this... It moves like this, this king b3 move is like, oh uh, yeah, just kind of tuck your king in, but I should I should really just get pushing right away. Some time wasted, and I'm sure multiple blunders for both sides. <laughs> so let's have a quick look um, with the computer and throw on the local evaluation and see if we could take a thing or two away from this. Sicilian defense, night orf variation, English attack. Let me adjust that. Okay, yeah, let's see this graph. Hmm. Okay. Some ups and downs here. Right towards that ending, I guess I am better. I'm just a little bit faster. And then and then my opponent was winning at some point towards the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's see if we could take a thing or two away from this one. So, pretty even stuff up to here. This a5, again, I don't have too much experience on the white end here. Um, but, uh, yeah, bishop b5, I don't know if we could get too many uh, good suggestions from this point. Hmm. A4, I know A4 is a move. Just to preserve this knight position. And the drawback, of course, is that it weakens B4, and so that queen knight hops right to it. And then D5 is that much closer to getting in, so you have to act swift. Um, I think one point to note is this quite common move, bishop to B5, uh, I think, can be... I think there's an idea connected with knight a7. And if you move away with the bishop, then I think there's a move like this. I mean, it's reading as plus one. I might have the might have the details a little bit off with this, but I, I've seen something where your black tries to overtake the b5 square. Uh, it might have actually been with the knight playing here. Yeah, I think this is... I think this was the move where if his white now after knight a6, bishop b5, knight c7 can be a move in some cases. Yeah, now it's even popping up knight c7. And for this reason, maybe even to uh, slightly more accurate for the queen knight is to not play to c6, but rather a6. Just to have a more centralized... Uh, uh, pivot square to attack the b5 square. It's true both c7 and a7 do this, but a knight on c7 uh, is more central. And, you know what, another way to maybe even look at it is that a knight on c7, let's say bishop b5, a knight on c7 is hitting both b5 and still facilitating this advance. These are um, little details, a lot of attention, of course, on just the squares in the position, the squares on the queen side, to be a bit more exact. The weakened square b5, the weakened squares b4 and b5. Um, but okay, in this one, what happened? I played a4, knight c6, I get on with g4. It likes h4 here, but okay, I went with g5, h4, knight b6, queen f2. Is that what I played? No, I continued to push. Uh-huh. 
So right now, queen to f2, how are things different? Queen f2, knight c4, takes, takes, and then calls for bishop to b6. Hmm. Still an even, an even position. Queen d7. Oh boy. <laughs> and now the computer is going pawn hunting. Hmm. That's not really a pawn I'm a big fan of taking. It's giving open lines for this uh, some attack against my own king. So if the idea really is to hunt down this pawn with bishop b6, yeah, don't know if I'm that big a fan of it. What would be, maybe be some other idea here? I'm not really sure. Is something like f4 available? Yes. f4 with f5, f6. Right now, actually, it's uh, threatening to take, taking advantage of this pin. So, you know, this is this is the more human-like move, let's just say. F4, if you compare bishop b6 and f4, I'd be more inclined to play f4. Okay, just to have a little bit of an idea, because it's, it's tough. It's like, how do I improve my rook positions? Is something like this an idea? It really, I don't see that as being a good idea. He's a a strong, he's a reliable defender of d6. Hmm. Yeah, so f4 in this position. After h4, knight b6, I played h5, but an immediate queen f2 takes, takes, and then f5 is a, seems like a fine way to approach this position. Okay. Sharp, for sure. Doesn't like f5, huh? Oh, man, you know what? I thought I didn't even consider this g6 idea. I had it in my mind when we have this situation with the pawns that any pawn move I make, they just make a pawn move to keep it locked. g6 met with h6. h6 met with g6. But I was forgetting that I have a sacrifice on this square. No, it's not going straight in for that. Wouldn't this be fine, though? No, it wouldn't, because I end up in a fork. <laughs> Which, uh, we can now see the idea with king to b1. It's giving, um... I'm not so sure about this. Yeah, f4. The king side is now what? It's locked down. This is, where, this is the side of the board I want to be playing on, and I don't see how to make further progress. Is however the idea uh, this is this is this is quite interesting. Is the idea to eliminate the light square bishops because then I could see then I could see something where we can pivot about on the d five square with a piece. Hmm. King here, I guess, is taking measures against bishop here. Allowing to uh, allowing black to preserve this light square bishop, bishop h3. No, it's okay with that light square bishop exchange, is it? I thought the idea with king there was to tuck the bishop away. I'm not sure how accurate we could, uh, how how much we could rely upon this evaluation. I know I'm not giving it a lot of time to think, but uh, yeah, it's a bit suspicious for sure. I mean. Uh, just as a general rule, I mean, we're trying to attack one another on... I'm trying to attack on the king's side, black's trying to attack on the queen's side. We both want the position to open up. We want open lines, open files, so... This idea of having the g and h file, g file and h file closed, and we have a situation where black can also shut down the f file like this. All these instances of fixed pawns on the king's side... Um, kind of doesn't doesn't seem right uh, for white. So, hmm. Okay, they went with f5, g6. I'm not sure about g6. <laughs> okay, I took still even queen g2. I played queen f7. Still holding it as even. What's the difference between with queen g2? Maybe to think about this stuff. Okay, queen f2. Takes, takes. King b1. 
Yeah, what a sharp game, man. What can I say? Takes. Gives me a pawn advantage, but wow, is it scary. Knight c1. I played knight c5. Doesn't like that. Knight c1, I guess. Keep a piece around near my king. It's defense. Okay, knight c5. B3, yeah, it's ve this is a very loose position now. Uh, it just seems to only be held together by a thread. I have a lot of pieces that are restricted <laughs> after I'm in this position right here, which I guess is still fine. It likes knight a4. I played knight a4. But I thought here... I know, was I, was I thinking rook takes pawn could be played at what point? No, I was thinking maybe at around this point the rook could take. With a knight takes c2. That's not quite the case. Rook takes pawn. I take the rook. Knight takes c2. King here. It's a bit scary for sure. But they're not quite pushing through. Successfully. Um, okay, so rook takes f3 isn't is not on. Queen a5, knight a4. Yeah, I only saw this once the position was presented on the board. I didn't even... I'm not sure. I uh, Actually, I was looking at the a6 square before I was even considering knight a4 to disrupt uh, the coordination between the rook and the pawn, but knight a4 cuts off the influence both queen and rook have uh, with the a2 pawn. So rook there. Now it's liking team white. Still, okay. Bishop g6. I want to get that knight out of there. Seems okay with it. Queen d5. Give something up with that, but <laughs> I just wanted the queens off at that point. Wow. Take. I'm surprised it's as even as it is for so long in such a sharp position. Wow. And now it's a big race. Grab the pawn. And it's liking black, it's liking white. Well, we are both really low on time around this point, but the name of the game is to get your pawns in motion. The C and D pawn still holding it as even. Right around this point, it should be shifting a real lot. Okay, now this is getting pretty serious. Pawn and a half advantage. Better being rook or bishop to f8, maintaining pressure here. Hmm. Okay, went with that. I keep pushing. Plus four now. Knight takes pawn, rook takes, bishop takes, knight takes, push, and yeah. This is where I couldn't even recall what just happened <laughs> when I was playing. Rook to d1. I just pushed. And that throws away the ball game. Rook to d1. Um, I have a little bit of a concern of this guy maybe being connected, but you know what? He's a long way off, is he not? Rook f7. Knight here. Threatening to push. Also, oh, another detail is it stops the rook from even getting to the 8th rank, so here, now push, here, there, and is this pawn in time? No, it's never in time. If I wanted to, I could come over here right away, but actually even better is saying, you know what, I'm not even allowing you to exchange your rook for my pawn. I will be getting a queen. Okay, so that's why they actually pointed out king f7 here. I could push, get a queen... And yeah, this, I could go right over and grab that pawn. So what did happen? Because eventually it did turn out where black was the better side. In the game, chop. I just pushed instead of rook here. I got a queen. And now, okay, well. Now I'm just losing because... What was better here? To push. Rook takes queen. 
and then rook to d1, rook to c3. Okay, yeah, tough to see why those are, uh, that this, uh, it's tough to see why this is a better move. Oh, well, it's preparing to get behind the pawn for one. It keeps the king cut off for a moment. It's another way to view it. Because the queen side of the board is now turning irrelevant. No pawns on that side of the board. The attention is shifting towards the king's side. My king wants to be on the king's side. Rook there cuts him off for at least a moment. Preparing to maybe do this and then push. Okay, so rook f8. I get my king rolling and they start pushing. And towards the end here, yeah, now it's at minus 6. Yeah, this is what I thought they could do. I, w I wasn't able to voice it during the game, but I thought, yeah, my knight, if I'm without him, these two pawns are greater than my rook. But they just pushed right away. Yeah, the the winning idea is to just take him out. King here, you take the knight. And then you just push. And he's crunched. But they were too quick to push their pawn there. And this allowed the draw. Wow. What an interesting game. Very sharp English attack. Feel free to leave any feedback to this one. It's, uh... <laughs> it was a nail-biter. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and um, again, uh, Happy New Year to you all. Okay, uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Hope all is well. Take care.